right. Hello and welcome everybody to Sozo Talk Radio. Welcome to your awakening. My name is Daniel Lovett, your host. And tonight I've got on the line my good friend Rick. Hey guys. Thanks yeah. for having me, bro. Yeah, so I have been intrigued to interview Rick just about his testimony. We've had so much fellowship and um, meetings and prayer times together, and I just really respect your your walk. Thanks. And I think I even shared a story of yours recently about something I'm really passionate about. I think it was on speaking in tongues and just how that even began for you and what, what you've been experiencing with that so let's start with that let's just touch on what has that oh. been in your life yeah you know i think actually it was something about hearing god and you know when it's first but however the tongue thing if you want to start on that um you know when i used to i went to this church a real long time ago and i was heavily involved and it was great but you know there was a time where i kind of you know got to call me out but there was a really close friend of mine and he he gave a word to me and he said that God wants you to speak in tongues. Um, I knew it was the Lord too, <laughs> but I just it was so weird to me. I honestly I put it to the side for years. Um, I think it was because you know the influence of the church I went to it was like a almost like a taboo. Um, but lately I've been doing this uh, definitely significantly more than I ever have. One night, I called the same friend, my friend Josiah. This is like, I kid you not, brother. This is over 20 years later, maybe 20 years later. I don't know. And I said, I did, this was a weird question I asked him. I'm like, bro, if there's a gift of the spirit that comes to your mind, you know, what is it? And eventually he said, interpretation. And I'm like, I knew it. I knew it because I, this is going to be weird but I think I'm supposed to pray in tongues and you're supposed to interpret right now. And wow. That's amazing. It, yeah. Um, I have it somewhere, but the bottom line, it was, it was kind of prophetic about kind of what he's doing. And the one thing that he, he had ter- interpreted at the end that I was saying was that it's time to sit on his throne with him, with him. And I had forgotten in revelation you know, that it, that it says that you're not like sitting on his lap, like Santa, you're sitting with him on his throne. I mean, it's, it blows my mind. And I'm like, so God kept confirming that all this, these things that was interpreted. The very next day, a friend of mine shared a testimony. His name is Charles Slagle, wonderful man. And he shared a testimony about, or just, just about, you know, if you ever speak in tongues and it sounds like you're saying the same dang thing over and over again. It, it's 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 most likely not and he was explaining some stories about tongues i'm like you gotta be kidding me just just yesterday was when i kind of first experienced i guess someone actually interpreting honestly because i do a lot more to myself or praying over people but you know what i mean so it was, it was, it was pretty wild so yeah that's amazing i just touched base with uh charles slagle as well i'll be interviewing oh. him on on here he's on my my very short list of oh, that's interview. wonderful. You'll have a blast. Yeah, I love that guy. He's he even prophesied over me and and shared a lot of interesting things. He's he's trying to just reinvigorate this gift that he flowed in so powerfully for so long. And then, you know, I think it's it's time for us all to do that. Reinvigorate, fan yes. into flame the gifts that God has instilled in us. Yes. And I love that you have that gift. In fact, you're right. I was mistaken. It was about hearing God. And I would love to hear about your hearing God and that journey for oh, you sure. as well. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, I first, and thanks to my dad, became a believer when I was 14. And I, God really met with me. And, and you know, when I just used to read the Bible and I, you know, I used to write down scriptures and I started memorizing scriptures at a young age because even though my dad did tell me about God, I kind of didn't really connect with him well. And so, but you know what? I had a lot of time alone when I was a kid. I, I was only even allowed 10 minute phone calls when I was a, like 16, 17 years old. So I didn't really have much of a personal life besides going to youth group on Friday. So this extra time I would spend reading the Bible, I guess that's not a bad thing, you know? Um, 
But it wasn't until I was 18. It was like, I mean, I was reading the Bible and praying for people for like an hour, reading for an hour, praying for an hour every day. And God just stopped the routine in a way where he just told me to be still and know that he was God. And it's like the most powerful thing I think he's ever told me. And I didn't even know what it meant. I didn't know what it meant at the time, you know? And I was like trying to meditate, which by the way, that was also kind of looked down upon at the church I went to. Meditation was not a good word. But I'm like, I felt that's what he wanted me to do. Just going with it, you know? And as God's speaking to me, I'm actually thinking, it was kind of actually like me talking to myself, but it wasn't me. It's just kind of like almost hearing my voice in, in me, but it was, it was not the same. And so after just meditating and just being silent, just waiting on him, he said, I want you to go to Psalm 46. And I'm going through Psalm 46 and I get to verse 10 and there it is. Be still and know that I'm God. And I'm like, Holy cow, you know, like, I had read the book of Psalms, bro, but there's 151 books. I mean, it's the biggest book in the Bible, chapters, you know. So I just started hearing God all the time, like he would meet me. Like I'd even be at a church service, and I remember there was this person that wanted prayer, and I would just even open up and say, Lord, do you want me to pray? Because that's how he met with me at that time. I would I literally open up for everything, and God would actually pinpoint things. I would, He would speak to me so much in the scriptures, I think I might have touched type this down that I would keep the Bible in my drive the passenger seat and I remember opening up when I was driving looking asking God for a word and I open up and says watch the road <laughs> like you gotta be kidding me man um but then That's funny yeah and then he just told me though uh when he started wanting me to just realize like he it was reassuring me that first he would speak to me in my spirit and then he would confirm it with science following. So he just told me, you don't have to carry this book around everywhere you go. That it's not, you're not actually carrying me around everywhere you go. That as vital as the scriptures I still think are to this day, he showed me about that I can trust my gut, so to speak, that I can trust that he's speaking to me, that he wants to speak to me, that the fellowship is real so I can make it help be real to people. And it's just... I've just been so kind of like humbled and broken over the past few days. I just realized how wonderful the simplicity is because people think that it's this great gift and it is absolutely not. Fellowship with God is just something that it should be normal because it's not sophisticated, right? Like he's seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these things will be added. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seek him while he's near, while he's found because he's always near, you know? <laughs> and, uh, Come just as you are kind of thing. I was never really a smart guy, man. Like, I did start reading the scripture. I think the Bible might have been the second or third book I've ever read through in my entire life when I was like 14 or 15. I never read books in schools, man. I always got, I was a kid who read the first page of a chapter and the last page just to try and glean from the chapters, but I hated reading. But I just... I, like God even started teaching me like through other brothers to encourage me. But even as I like would go for a walk, I asked the spirit, okay, guide me. You want me to go right here, left here? And I didn't feel like, like I'm trying to be religious or like really paranoid. Like, can I, oh shoot, did I wear the wrong shirt today? Or, you know, oh, did I, should I not have picked my right hand up like this? Or no, I was free. I was free to be led by the spirit. And it, I, God would actually sometimes navigate me to places without having a GPS and just getting me there almost, you know what I mean? Perfectly just by simply saying, and, it, and it's not even anything special. I just am literally saying, Holy spirit, it's all you because you already know what Rick Legnese is capable of. And it, and it doesn't seem very pretty. Um, but then, you know, as, as I'm, as you more, as we grow, we start to find this identity, right? And that, is one of the most beautiful parts is realizing who I am. I mean, like Rick Lagnese is just the shell I'm in, but who, who I really am is like probably been connected with God for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. In some ways, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, the way I, I, I tell my friends, I say, when I pray for them, I'm like the entity currently known uh, as the avatar of so-and-so. <laughs> the avatar, right, right. <laughs> 
you know, yeah. and, and it's interesting you talked about being navigated by the Holy Spirit. Like I, this is so fun. I, I used to do the, well, I used to do these concerts. Yeah, that was my full-time job for like a long time doing concerts at nursing homes. And, uh, cool. you know, I didn't have a smartphone for, you know, for good many years. And, uh, you know, I'd even, whatever. And so I, I left home without even looking up an address of this place. I just knew it was in this town, Sheboygan. It's, Sheboygan's huge. <laughs> and I'm going to this facility and, and I'm like, I just have enough time to go exactly straight there. I don't have time to wander around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't have my phone with me to call anybody. And I'm, and I'm driving there and I didn't look it up at all. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, lead me. And I just, I got this peace about it. I was just relaxed, you know, and then I, I turn this turn and I turn that turn and then boom, I'm there. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful, man. And I've never been there before. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. And then you talked about meditation. I'll just touch on some of these things you mentioned, but I just interviewed uh, Paul Sadal about Christian meditation. And we, we talked, I've talked about other, with others about contemplation and, and, and what mm-hmm. meditation really is all about. And even how, even how speaking in tongues, this prayer language, is a form of contemplation. I thought that was really intriguing to learn that. Mm. You know, that it, it's a way of, of getting your uh, dullard mind out of the way and tuning in to the spirit mind and submitting yourself to that and to the prayers of heaven. And that's why okay. I love speaking in tongues is, is because it's really served me to tap into that higher realm and start thinking like heaven does instead of how the duller Daniel thinks yeah. would think based on all my life experience. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. I only have so many years on this planet. Like what? And I'm going to trust that wisdom. Right. No, I, I can trust in the mind of Christ, which is the upload of every single Holy one who's ever lived, you know, and all of their consent, Con- consensus of wisdom you know and, and all that it's mm. pretty cool absolutely that's right i mean that that's the one thing about christ isn't it it is something that applies to us all really in a way and i mean it's it's not only right there in front of us it's like just revealing itself from within and i just you know if anything i just challenge the church that you know while it's already there it's also important to walk in it. That's why it's called walking in the spirit. It's, it's a wonderful thing that is filled with action yet. It's, it's, you can't even take credit for it, but it, cause it is by God's grace, but it's this wonderful relationship and relationship. There are choices that you, we do make and it. And I find that some, have you ever had, let me ask you this. Have you ever had God say, you know what you choose? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think he has a curiosity about our free will because our free will really matters. Yeah, you know, like like at about all the possibilities. Well, what's my child going to do? They are completely free. I don't. It's not determinism or fate. It's like your free will actually matters. Like I don't think God knows. He just rolls with <laughs> your choices. God is sovereign, but so are you. You know, over uh, <laughs> the sphere of influence that that you're mature enough to handle right now, you know, and that, and that sphere will grow as your maturity grows. Yeah. And it's kind of cool because like, I find more that as we delight ourselves in him, I understand what David said about, um, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And the recently when I, I had left, um, to try and apply this, I, I left my one job that I was there for nine years. It was a cell phone gig and I was one of their top reps and I had all this favor in the world. I could basically work my own schedule and do most of my, like I had so much, a nice, really like big size customer base, but the spirit, like father was telling me anything. Um, I think it was the father that was telling me, you know, sometimes I wonder like when the spirit or Jesus or father, I think the father was telling me, He's moving me on. It's like, you know, with Elijah, he dries up the brook, so it's time for him to move on. And it was hard to hear that because we had, my wife and I just had started to come into the stability of income where we can actually start getting out or of debt or not having to go into it. 
I have a stay home job, but it's also part time. So anyway, God had all these confirmations and about why I'm supposed to leave. But one of them was I was really worrying and I was stressed and I, I normally don't get like this. God, the spirit is just so wonderful in my life that it can help me be confident. I was not confident right now. I was praying outside of my store. This was before I left. And all of a sudden, this thing flies by my face. And I knew it was the Lord, like sending something across my way. And it just sat there on the pavement in the parking lot when I was praying. And I look at it, and it, and it literally just like turns its head and looks at me right in the eyes and doesn't move except for it turning its head. And it was a praying mantis. I had never encountered a praying mantis. I don't know ever. But I, the Lord started showing me all this stuff about a praying mantis that um, I even looked it up. I didn't realize it was P-R-A-Y, I-N-G. I thought it was P-R-E-Y, but because they look like they're praying. So, so here it is. I'm looking this up and about peace and mantises. Praying mantises only attack their prey if they're 100% certain. Like they learn how to be 100% perfect in their attack, and they know the exact timing of when to attack. And that's what the Lord showed me. He said, I will show you in, in the exact day when I want you to leave, and everything will be perfect. Just peace, patience, and trust me. Now I'm going to get to the part about the light yourself and the Lord. So it was like a couple weeks later, and I had this desire to go to the movies. This is before the, just before the virus and all that. And I'm like, I got, I, and I knew it was the Lord though. And that's what I love because you can actually have desires and it, you don't have to think that they're all bad or something or just some lustful craving. Like I knew it was God. I, I love that. So my friend and I went to see the movie. Um, uh, it was, uh, boy, what's her name? She, she, she led, um, she led a lot of uh, African-Americans of freedom. And she was, yes, a, it was Harriet. Uh, Harriet, of course. I am telling you saw the movie. Oh heck yeah! I I prayed in tongues through the whole I was thing done. and wept. <laughs> I was done. But do you remember? The Lord gave her a praying mantis. She woke up and she saw this praying mantis look at her. And I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me! You just gave me a praying mantis, Father. And it was like just the Holy Spirit confirming it, and the way she moved, and the how she went through the water when they were worried she could drown. And I'm like, my God, this is what you're having me do right now. Not on the same extent. I'm not up there with her and the, the risk she took on that level necessarily, like literally. But I'm like, I just love it because I, I was in just, you know, I realized that whatever I do, enjoy him. You know, it doesn't mean it's going to be pretty. You know, you don't always have to be happy. You can be in the spirit and actually not be happy. And what I mean is, it's not emotional. Like, it's not like, like the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? Not my joy. His joy brings me strength. And of course, I find that peace and more joy than, you know, than I, than I used to. It seems like every day. But, you know, I, I don't think like Jesus himself was happy when he was sweating blood, was he? Mm -mm. But he, it was the joy that was set before him that he endured the cross. But we see how human he was. So I'm like, God is blowing my mind because I'm learning the duality of things, that there's no time in eternity, and that's time as an illusion, but on this realm, there's still time, and he still does things based on time in this earth realm, and that's why I love how he still has me discern timing on things, and like even, he told me to leave on December 22nd, mm -hmm. and do 222 to the power of witness, and Daniel 222 is like how he reveals secret things. Um, your name being Daniel, of course, but like he, you know, re revealing secret things. I forgot how the scripture goes, but it's like confirmation and just that he's leading and guiding you. And so, we, my wife and I are kind of walking in faith here a little bit, even with our finances, but we have this peace, bro. And it's just like because we know, you know, and it's the joy that's set before us. And mm -hmm. I just love how he confirms himself, man, just delighting ourselves in him, yeah. You know? I'm learning to relax into that as well, like Jesus being our Sabbath rest, and him Amen. even in him even giving giving him the permission to say, "Hey, dude, take a sabbatical, 
You've been working hard for 12 years. What if I just wanted to give you a few months off? Just relax. Learn to relax. Learn to have yeah. peace. Yeah. Rest in this time. Take a nap every day. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I do. Quit beating yourself up like, dude, you're not working hard and da, 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 whatever. Or yeah. like, you know, cursing yourself with the scriptures like uh, we, we can do as Christians. We can do that. We can take the scriptures yeah. and beat ourselves over the head. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> well, God has a perfect timing and seizing season for every word. Absolutely. That's perfectly apropos. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Right right hearing, hearing your story and about your walk with God. And uh, what are some other times that he has spoken to you that really stand out? Um, one that really stood out, boy, um, it was about a, maybe a year and a half ago where he was speaking to me about this lion that dwells within me that wants to rule and reign in me that is there and it's time for this lion to roar and, and and i started learning all this stuff god i couldn't get away from it bro like i would see uh like someone with a license plate that said a lion on it I'm like no who who does that like god what really did you just put it on their plate are you like messing with my vision here to see lion on their license yeah, mm -hmm. i was seeing it everywhere uh, my friend josiah who i just love man that guy dude he we talked all the time and he said I just had a customer because he also sold phones and he said, a customer told me he loved my service. And, and the customer told me, man, you're a lion. Like who says that? So anyway, God kept bringing this up and he told me the places he wanted to take me in the spirit realm that I couldn't have any fear. And what I knew he meant was that, that if I trust him, I won't need to be afraid where he wants to take me. And you see, and this is, you know, I, I'm always open to, you know, learning things and sharing things, even if it sounds like it's kind of out there, I'll just be honest. And yeah. I thought he was telling me, just like, you know, when Jesus went to preach to the spirits in prison, I don't necessarily think they all repented. I don't. Mm -hmm. I think he showed them and gave them the opportunity because of how amazing he was. And it's like, you know, people debate about what that prison was. I have some ideas of it, especially after reading the book of Enoch a little bit, but that he's telling me that he wants to send me there. Yeah. Wonderful. And wonderful. Yeah. And I know we can even experience this, this now actually, but yeah, yeah this lion, like, well, I'll tell a, you what, yeah, go ahead. Tell you what, I interviewed somebody on the show, Martin Smith, who did was taken with by Jesus to descend into uh, this prison under under the earth, you know, the, where all these cells and souls were. And he preached. He preached to them. And he saw, like, um, he said well over 90% of them did repent. And he witnessed reunions between these souls and Jesus. And some of them wanted to shrink back with shame. And Jesus like, no, come here. Get, you know. Amazing. You know, like, don't even think about that. And the reconciliation was happening. And I really believe that this is what the great harvest is all about. Not just in the, in the, in the you know, <laughs> who we consider alive or whatever walking yeah. around, but like these, all these, you know, what, what you'd say in prison souls, captives, you know, that he is bringing uh, t to salvation and freedom and yes. setting the captives free. This is what Amen. Jesus does. And he's yeah. got the keys and he's allowing us to participate in this. So, Yes, go, brother, go. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've got a chance to do a little bit of that myself already and, and preaching to these spirits. And uh, you know, it's just it's by faith. There's a lot of stuff that's happening by faith that like our dullard will get in the way. And like, you know, was that really real? Like what just happened here? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for sure. So, that's okay. Yeah, it's like the and I didn't realize too that like you know, when a lion roars, at least in the wild, it can go up to five miles. You can hear it roar up to five miles long. But to show that that's his territory, like if you come in with these five miles, you're, you're on my ground. 
that's why the line first word, but also, and this is what blew my mind. It's any of the, the Cubs, you know, that were, that were uh, lost, you know, any of the line Cubs that were lost that they could then find where their, their King was essentially, or their, you know, their leader. And I'm like, man, God, that's so you to walk in that kind of authority, but to also gather those who are lost. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not just non-believers. There are a lot of believers who are walking in a state of being lost because, the, you know, the, when it says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, that destroy actually more means law, like to, to be lost, to, to, to help to try and get people to think they're lost in their mind. And so it's, it's really the time, you know, like the lamb and the lion type thing. Jesus came as a lamb. Now it's like as, as a lion and I'm just getting, it's just a wonderful thing. So that was a, that was a powerful thing. It started to understand more of this, this newfound authority. But even when the lion roars, there's even some, a bit of graciousness to it as well. And that makes sense, you know? Um, and there, there are others too, but well, that's I know, for some reason, it was, yeah, it was pretty awesome. I even, God even gave me like this visual thing. It was it was wild. He was like giving me this vision and this stuff. It was, yeah, yeah. It's really special the the walk of faith, and I would love to come back to um, just what we were touching on earlier, like before we hit the record button of simple pure devotion to Christ and really just this fellowship. That's what the whole point is, you know, um, about this whole thing that we get to be good friends and really enjoy fellowship with simple, pure devotion and how the enemy would seek to distract us from that. But, uh, yeah, if you want to touch on that, what was that meant to you? Um, when I was young, it was, I was like really quiet when I was young. I was kind of, depressed a lot I think and I think it had a lot to do with my parents being divorced and then all these changes in life they even wanted to put me on medication stuff my dad said absolutely not which is fantastic but I always have felt probably for for, until I was like maybe 14 15 16 years old I always felt like a lot like less about myself and then I realized when I was embraced by this God who his love never changes that I could you know, he, and I realized he already knew, like, what's going on in my life. He knows me. Obviously, he knows everything um, that I can still come to him. And as the scripture says, you can go boldly to the throne of grace, like boldly. It, it blows my mind that I'm just myself with God. I, I, I get excited with God still. I'll, um, when he confirms something, I kid you not. As weird as it sounds, I'm like, oh, you did it again. Holy Spirit. Thank you. You know, like, because I, I always, I get excited like that because that's just part of even the personality, even like part of my soul that has this unique personality. We all have unique personalities in our soul. And, and God, like, wants us to express that, and it, and it can be so pure, you know, it, because it's really the soul and the spirit becoming one. It's finding out the fullest expression of, of who God is and you are at the same time, and it's like, I've, I've honestly said some things to God that, you know, I, I don't know if this show is PG, PG 13 or rated R uh, <laughs> or your, your, inter, your interviews you do, but I won't say exactly what I said, but I, when I was in the middle of a thinking thought process crisis, if you will, this is when my, um, my wife and I moved to Dallas. We were just getting out of debt and then long story short in order to move we had to spend a good chunk of change and we started going back into debt but the lord told me that he trust me he's going to take care of us and eventually we're going to come out and 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 even dare i say he told me that we were going to prosper not only spiritually but even financially just in stepping in faith mm-hmm. but the exact opposite was happening at least in my understanding because i was looking at the tangibles of the bank account going over two grand in debt every month but God kept speaking to me. So, bro, I'm telling you, I had, I met Charles Slagle in Dallas, and he taught me a lot about prophetic prayer. And, man, God had me take off with that right away. I would say things to just random people at stores, and they would just be in tears. I, I, w- I would prophesy over someone. I'd be at their house that night having dinner. Um, 
And yet I want, I remember telling my wife, I'm like, if God doesn't come through what he says, I'm not going to literally say it. But I said, then he's an effing liar. That's how mad I was. Mm. I got off the phone. And I said, honey, I got to go. I hung up on her, but it wasn't like I was mad at her. I was like, God, what did I just say? And I felt this instant warmth and peace. Like, he's, it was almost like it was almost like he was telling me, listen, like, bro, like, like I like I would say, bro. So he's like, bro, I am not mad at you at all. Uh, and it just it melted me. Uh, I then I turned on the radio because I actually felt led to, even though I just said that. You think, how could you get discernment after you just said something so stupid? <laughs> but there it was, and I turned on the radio, and it was something about just. It's not even a song that I'm a fan of, but it's just like the Lord just made it very powerful to me about his grace and love and what he did on the cross. Later that night, he told me, and it was through one of Charles's books called Abba's Calling. And it's like he wrote down prayers. He thought that God was speaking to him. So I just randomly opened it up and God, damn, it was like, not only am I not mad at you, I am proud of you. I'm so happy that you are walking with me in this great walk of faith. Don't worry about it. And then... I just realized that, you know, I can walk on water. I mean, I can literally walk on water with God. He was having me walk on water in faith. Because even when we moved from Dallas, bro, everything we owned was in our van. We just had a child in Dallas. We only lived there for six months. We only sent a few boxes back via FedEx, and we had no home. We didn't even know where we were going. But the Lord said to go back to New York. He provided, long story short, he provided double the income that I've ever made, more than I've ever made, got us out of debt. All this stuff was happening. It was provision, miraculous provision. I had money show up underneath my feet. I, I had gotten overpaid until the Lord just told me, that's for you. I had, I, but all of that, honestly, all of those amazing things is nothing compared to the intimacy that I learned with God. Like, yeah. again, as much as those things mean so much to me, and that actually did help increase my faith, to be very honest, because tangibles are okay, and they should happen. But I just learned how much I can trust Him. I learned how much I can talk to God and be myself completely. Yeah. It's, it's a joy to, to be yourself. and Intimate, man. Yeah, intimate. That's what being a Christian mystic is all about. Intimacy with God. Like, into me you see God. And, you know, he, he says, I see you, like in the avatar sense. I actually put that in my opening chapter of my book. I just made a little audio book, too, for the first chapter and put it up on the Christian Mystic. I don't know if you got a chance to see that. I have not, sir. But, uh, yeah, you can <laughs> download it, too. Um, but uh, So that's, that's what it's all about. It's intimacy. Yeah. Intimacy with God. That's what this whole thing's about. And, yeah, uh, I love that. I, I love it. And I've been learning the same thing. And like, like you said, to be free, to be yourself, and especially to find friends who you can be free with. What a gift that is. Uh, you know, oftentimes it's like, sometimes these friends are few and far between. And uh, you know, believe me, you know, I know. Yeah. And sometimes it's just you and Jesus being free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's golden. But I think that more of free brothers just need to gather and realize, hey, we're not alone. We can we can fully appreciate who Rick is in Jesus Christ and yes. all your personalities and just how you express the, yourself in faith and with the Lord Jesus Christ and you know just even even like swearing or whatever it might be. No. <laughs> just uh, relax and, and yeah. let loose. <laughs> I mean, I have brothers in the Lord, to be honest with you. We're so free yeah, that yeah. we know if we don't give power to those words, we can use them and laugh. And sometimes it, it can help better express how you're feeling. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I mean, Martin Luther uh, used to get so mad at, you know, even, you know, uh, I know people have their different opinions opinions of who Satan is, but he would just start like cursing at, at the devil. He would get so mad, but he's being real. Like, and, you know, and, and that's, a, it's one thing I want my kids to know is how real mm -hmm. and loving God is, but also how real, because sometimes we use that word love and it is so like, we're not even using it in its proper context because 
love isn't like this just fuzzy feeling. It's not like just this, you know, arrow through the heart, uh, magical. It's perfect. So if it's perfect, it's something we should use even that word almost, a li- I don't want to say cautiously, but it can even be a word of reverence because unconditional love is to be revered. And, and so that um, I was with my daughter the other day in our backyard and I told her, you know what God just told me the other day, that if I, he would rather have me spend all the time in the world with you and make sure that you are important to me all your little desires and needs, because I can lose track of that since I have five children and be real busy, whatever. He said he would rather have me do that than even talk to you about them. And sometimes if you hear that the wrong way, it sounds like blasphemy. He's like, no, because I can talk about God all I want. But if I'm not backing it up, then it means jack shite, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. of course I mention his name, but that needs to be shown in my actions more than my words. Yeah. Especially to children. Um, but if I may say something that you said about getting together and with the friends where you can be free, this is part of the reason, even before the recording that my heart is crushed, because God has been really showing me how important it is. Even if we don't feel like we have a lot to offer that we need to be together. Like this isn't even optional, like not religiously, but we, it's not optional. Like the reason why we see the, the, the fear in the media and stay home Honestly, that's one rule of thumb I tell my kids. Whatever the media is telling you to do, just do the opposite, and you're going to be a okay. <laughs> but when they're because it's not of God, we have to know what's being put out there. It's like, Lord, is this you? Rather than just believing it, and I'm like, instantly I knew it. Like this is not God telling people to stay home and keep your distance. Like, yes, I get it. It's not all black and white. Have discernment, respect others. But I started getting together with people all the most more so. Mm-hmm. And in the book of Acts, because, you know, everyone about Pentecost is like, yeah, God keeps bringing a Pentecost to me in, in, in the month of May, right? But what they did, it, they, they were together for like 50 days, right? Because Pentecost, 50 days after Passover, or at least 50, or maximum 50 days, whatever. And they were of like-mindedness. And they diligently prayed. And it's like, you know, when it comes together and together, we sometimes have this this inclusive message sometimes can be twisted by deceiving spirits because sometimes God is just calling like-minded people to get together. So if you have someone that comes over that's really judgmental, it can really grieve the spirit and they have a hard time to have this fellowship. And sometimes he just really wants you to get together with a few, which is why Jesus even had Peter, James, and John, or just the 12 apostles. So, but it says they were of like-mindedness and brother, I believe that he's going to pour out a spirit again in wonderful measures. You know, we can say it's already there, but we need to start manifesting it into reality because we're responsible, I think, for a lot of what we see in the world because we're creators. So it, we need to get together. We need to just seek the Lord and say, listen, I may not feel like I have much to offer at times too or whatever, but you know what? In Christ, we have everything to offer because of him. So let's get together, seek his face, and let's, let's have him have his way. Thank More now than ever, you know. Right on, right on. I had uh, one of the most glorious meetings with my friends the other night around a fire in my backyard. Love it. And it was it was amazing, you know. We all shared a glass of wine and had a, not shared one glass of wine. We all had a glass of wine ourselves <laughs> and just hey, free, bro. relaxed and prayed and yeah. You know, and uh, like I, I was meeting in spirit some of my friends for the first time, you know, just like who I'd known for a long time. But like they got to see the real Daniel come out. That's cool. I got, I met the real them, you know, yeah. and we had a we had a blast, mm. you know. And, That's good. Uh, yeah. That's what it's all about. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. Um, what else should we talk about? Hmm. I mean, I could tell you, I mean, if, I guess since we're just kind of trying to go with the flow here, um, someone recently sent me this, um, it was a video on like meditation. Actually, it's Christian, uh, you know, Christian. Yeah. And um it was, really, it was really pretty powerful. This woman was singing in the spirit in the background. 
I love the singing in the spirit. You know, you know when it's in the spirit, and they're just singing what's on their heart, what the, what the Lord, what the spirit is leading them to sing. And while I was meditating, I was just like, it's such peace in my bedroom, man. And I just was like, it was like, you know, God totally just, the mind of Christ was, was there. it was just, my, just the mind of Christ there. And all of a sudden I saw this right hand just come out and reach his hand out. But it wasn't just to me. And I knew it was the hand of the Lord. And um, when I was just picturing that, the Lord just extend his right arm specifically. Um, I just knew that she was going to start singing about this very thing, even though God had shown me it before I heard her singing in the song. And the next thing she sang was about taking God's hands and holding them tight. And as weird as it was, just a simple revelation there, or just a simple thing God gave me. The verse of the day in my Bible app was, he upholds you by his right hand. That was the verse I got the next day. The church that I drive by, even though no one's going to their church physically, they change the sign every week. And it was, trust God and take him by the hands. And I was like, okay, Lord, I, what are you saying here? And he was, what he was telling me is this. A lot of the times when we talk about an awakening or when we talk about the good things that are to come, yes, I know the good things are here now too, but there are good things to come. Um, we sometimes don't, it's hard for us to talk about though, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Or I should say, well, it's not always easy because let's look at what's going on in the world, you know, especially in places where you're not even hearing on the news where people are being killed for their faith, tortured, men, women, children, uh, that you're not, that's not on the news. So people don't seem to care about it, unfortunately, but these things are happening far worse than what we're seeing even in America. And so what is it that God's going to protect them from? Well, it's not so much protecting us from physical harm. It's that when we are suffering or whatever you want to word it, right? Whenever you have something that's difficult, that you can be in God's peace and give him praise and experience the glory of the Lord flow through you because it's through the fellowship of Christ's sufferings that we really get to know God. I have no doubt in my mind. I know we can know God in, in many ways, but the most I've ever grown was why I feel like my soul's been stretched the most. And he was just showing me, I'm, I'm asking you, take my hand. I Take it. Let's go. Yes, it's, it might not look pretty all around you. It might not be easy, but I'm there with you every step of the way. And let's do this thing. And not only that, we have a great cloud of witnesses cheering us on that are working on the other side of the veil. It's like so wonderful. And that the most, like Stephen, right, when he was being stoned. He was being stoned, but he looked up and he saw Jesus, and it was like he had this peace. And that is true glory. That is true worship. When you're worshiping him, when it makes doesn't feel like it makes physical sense to, because there could be pain or suffering or some sort. And that's that's why the scriptures have a lot of wonderful things to say about those who are who have died in the faith, you know, um, as, as as martyrs or whatever. But there's something really I think important to be said about that because I think the American church just thinks that God is going to protect us from anything that quote unquote bad that's to happen. It's like, no, no, we got to stop looking at it from a selfish perspective, especially in America where we have things very comfortable still in comparison. You, you know what I mean? Like in comparison mm -hmm. that there could be so, some really difficult things we're going to be faced with, but that does not mean we can't walk in the fullness of his glory. In fact, even more so. Because even when you see an increase in, in darkness, perhaps, you're going to see the light that much more, and the light's going to swallow up the darkness. And, it's, and we're the ones that get to partake in this because we're the, the sons of God, or the creation is waiting for that. The sons of God to come into full form. It's like, kick ass, man. I'm sorry, but it's like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? With his love and mercy and like turning crap over. You know, like religious tables over again. And, and the walls of Babylon, you know, because it's, it, it's falling. Yeah, I hope. No, <laughs> yeah, I pray for the the justice. The justice is the setting things right and and the establishment yeah. of, of God's way of things. And and heck, I don't know all the timetables or all the details. I don't need to, but what I do need is to maintain righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, the essence of the kingdom, no matter what happens. Amen. And not let the enemy distract. You know. 
as he does his dance before our eyes and say, hey, look at me, look at me, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No that doubt. sort of thing. So we look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, yes. uh, and we heed the still small voice. You got to lean in for that one. You got to get still yourself. Be still and yes. know that I'm God, which is why this Christian meditation, uh, contemplation, I love that word. Um, I agree. Yeah. Jesus did, right? I mean, I honestly think that Jesus, as a human, had to get along with the Father. Like, that wasn't, he had to. He, to, to be ministered to, to talk with the Father, be alone with the Father, to rest in his presence. He needed that. We all need it. And I guess I just have this brokenness there because, like, you know, and I think it's, I think it's good, though, because I don't, I surely have had my days of, full of pride at times like I, I don't want ego like goodbye you're not even real get out ego stop go you know <laughs> like but this um because i i know that uh you know um and living and in, in bringing the god's kingdom also means that you you know i believe we experience a lot of what jesus went through and the apostles did and that's even uh where sometimes it does feel a little lonelier but then you god never fails and, and, and he'll bring people your way that just like you just, even, like, even with yourself, bro, you, we just have this peace of God. We can just fellowship. We know we could talk about whatever. It wouldn't even matter. And even if we didn't understand it, we'd be like, all right, well, spirit leads us and guides us in all truth. So we just trust him, whatever. You know, we don't have to be afraid. So, yeah. I know it sounds all simple, but I think a lot of it is. I just think it doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it is simple. Does that make sense? It's simple to follow him like, he doesn't make it hard, but straight is the way, right? That leads to life. Uh, and few to be that find it. But I also think that that, I know this is a tangent, bro. But I, oh, I think that, that there's things that God does in ages. And I think that, you know, remember, what, oh, that's my light. That's why it's kind of dark, too, because I got to replace it. But, <laughs> um, you know, Jesus said everything that the Father had given to him, he wants to give to us. Mm-hmm. Like, he wants to give you everything. But if we remember, remember a Jewish boy made his bar mitzvah at the age of 12, and he would have to learn to go about the father's business for 18 years. And then at 30, the father would give his son his inheritance because he could trust him with it. He could trust him then to run his business. And see, the Lord is saying to us now, he's saying that I want to give you all these things, but I want to trust you with my kingdom fully. I, I, I need to be able to trust you because I want to give you this. And he does in stages, right? But it's, it's wonderful because in the, sun, in the realm of eternity, it's all done. But in this realm, we're still manifesting these things. And, that's, and it's kind of exciting. And he does. He wants to entrust it to us. It's amazing. Dude. It's, it, it's very relational. And I love it. Yeah, absolutely. I like how you, he mentioned that it, it is a finished work, you know, from heaven's perspective, but that we get to, this is our great gift that we yes. get to walk it out and get to play it out and be like, and be surprised all along the journey. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. You know? And, yeah. And, and yeah, fellowship of the sufferings. Wow. That kind of brought up uh, Philippians 3, you know, where Paul said that, you know, to, to I know him. Yeah, to know him and the fellowship of his sufferings. And, and he actually even took extra that what he was making up for the lack of sufferings in the body of Christ, he says, you know, and uh, he's like, all right, I'll take double share. I'll take, you know, he sh like the first thing Jesus showed him after he got converted was showed him how much he will suffer for his namesake. <laughs> You know, and he's still like, okay, sign me up. <laughs> Isn't that something? I think that's why the Lord had him get away for three years, right? I think it was three years in Arabia, or, you know, this like he was totally alone with God. To un uh, There must have been a lot of undoing, you know, the religious Pharisee part. Hmm. But there must have been so much wonderful healing because he said he got a revelation of Jesus Christ. If you get a revelation of Jesus Christ, you're healed at least internally, <laughs> I mean, you are going to experience healing when you get a revelation of Jesus Christ. And I think about that and I'm like, there is a couple words that the church is afraid to talk about and one is suffering. But see, if we talk about the suffering of men, we think about fear, anxiety, physical pain. That is not at all 
or you know how God's looking at it. He's looking at this fellowship with him in these things because he knows, again, who we really are. This shell is so temporal, but our soul and spirit is like forever, and he's working on that soul, right? Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, but it's being worked out through intimacy, not just a working out of labor of like, you know, we're, we're just like bitter religious beings, but our soul is being worked out, you know, Paul said, now may you be sanctified, holy, sozo, right? Mm -hmm. In spirit, soul, and body. And Peter said that the salvation of our souls, is, he, he said last days, but he said that it, the, the, there's a salvation to come, and it's the salvation of your soul. And I find that, again, through the fellowship of Christ's sufferings is where I learn, you know, he said that I may know him through the power of his resurrection through the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to the image of his death. And then he says, this is a part that kind of sounds intimidating, that by any means I may attain to the resurrection. But see, I think, brother, that if we just keep our eyes on God and we walk with him, then there's no nothing to worry about. Yeah. Yeah, but if yeah. you're not walking with God, there's a lot to worry about because you're not walking in the mind of Christ. Not that we should worry. I'm just saying from my own experience when I'm not, when I feel like I'm not in alignment, so to speak, I, yeah, I, I, I stress, you know, I can get, my, I can have a little temper sometimes, uh, say things that, you know, I shouldn't or whatever. And I'm like, that's not the fruit of the spirit. So it's like, oh God, here I repent for like the, 13,000th time today. <laughs> but he's always renewing our minds. So it's good. It's good, you know? Yeah. I concur. So you want to hear something exciting that I've been researching lately? And this all started when I decided to spend some quality time with my daughter. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Spending that quality time with our children really getting into their lives, I would recommend, highly recommend everyone do that. Just how do you love them well? Well, get into their world. What's their world like? And uh, to love them well, we need to get, get into that. So for my daughter, one night, I, I was just like, what's, what have you been up to? What are you, what are you reading or what's going on in your, in your world? And she said, oh, I'm reading these Tinkerbell books. And I'm like, oh, well, who's your favorite character in there? And she talked about the animal fairy one who could talk to animals and, and things. So I start to research this on her behalf. I'm like, I'm just going to encourage this. I'm like, you know what? I think that's a spiritual gift we could, we could attain. We can, we can do that. We can talk to animals, you know? So it unlocked yeah, this whole new thing for, for us, you know, that even last night we watched another, another documentary about this woman who can talk to animals and just, she talks about how she does it and, and uh, I'm just fascinated because uh, like I seem to have more connection myself with like my own cat, like we communicate better. And I had this dream where I'm talking to this sheep, you know, and, and it was amazing. Like, like this dream was so real. Like I'm actually literally talking with this, this sentient being, you know, we've, we've assumed they're so we've treated them like dumb animals. Like, you know, in the C.S. Lewis books talks about, you know, no, they're talking animals. <laughs> they are talking yeah. animals. Once yeah. we uh, once we unlock this, and our, we're the dumb ones. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, bro. Yeah, so this has been fascinating to me. Like just the the weight of evidence, and and like even Saint Francis, like he talked to the animals back in the day, and mm. he tapped into this. And many saints throughout history have. And how about so how about the saints now? How about the saints now? Let's talk to the animals. Let's connect to the trees. Like I yeah, had this experience where I, I, com I commune with the spirit of the, of the trees in my backyard. It was amazing. Mm. So that's what's going on in my world. <laughs> it's funny. There's times I've even gone on podcasts or interviews and I, they, they don't even put it up after. And I'm thinking, oh, no. I wonder if it's because I talked about the fellowship of Christ's suffering. I think that really scares people. But it, to me, it's just like, it actually is a greater form of love I experience in a way where it's like, my God, I can be going, because I've gone through some really, I mean, I'm sure all we all have in our own ways, but some like really 
times of great testing and gut wrenching things, only to know that I can still walk in God like with this wonderful intimacy, no matter what I'm going through. I can have this peace that goes beyond all understanding, that, that goes beyond our understanding. Mm -hmm. And that you learn that the best when you're usually tried the most or so it's not like I wanna it's not like I want to go through like massively difficult things all the time. But that's why these guys said embrace James would say embrace these things because because it's it's like opportunities really if you will to advance if you will to overcome to learn more to have your mind be renewed not being conformed to the patterns of the world where we just want to be scared no if you you walk with God then you have nothing to worry about and you don't have to be afraid yeah and you can consider it pure joy pure joy yeah that's what yes. how, I that's think what you can... consider it pure joy. Uh, may we all come into a healthy attitude and perspective of that. Cause like even me, I'm like, well, how do I even handle that? Like, I don't, I'm not anxious to go suffer, <laughs> but you know, yes. and I don't think we ought to be really, like you say, no, it's I, just I, like I, just following I, Jesus and then somehow incorporating this attitude in our hearts of like considering a pure joy when you do fall into various trials and the testing of your faith. Hmm. Okay. You know, fellowship of his sufferings, like Paul talked about. Some places wow. when you convert to Christianity, they actually have you dig their, dig your own grave because the life expense expectancy is like months after you confess Christ. So you're literally digging your grave, like literally, hmm. you know, that that's just something American Christians don't even want to talk about when, because again, we, I'm not saying all, but as, as, a, as a Church of America, we really need to repent. And again, repenting is just a change of mind, but it leads to a change of life in Christ and that we ultimately, it, it all comes down to intimacy. And you really find out sometimes where your head is at, where your faith is at, when you are tested. If you're not going and i'm not saying that you know it's just like you know just this battle all the time against like demons or devils no a lot of this battle is really just with your own mind you know so as the soul submits to the spirit then the soul starts to be renewed so then it's even me logically i can even process this more because i realize logically i'm just going to the lord my soul's more used to submission to the spirit so there isn't this battle like it used to be because I've gone through it. And that's why it says, to him who overcomes, he will not be hurt by the second death because everyone experiences the lake of fire, but you won't be hurt by it because you've already gone through it. Yeah, that's true. So let's true. go through it. Yeah, we come into right relationship with the one who is the lake of fire, the all is. fire. Who and then is we God. become a part of that, and we are it now in a way. So it's like, yeah. praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm.